Hello, welcome to Let's Talk Algorithms. My name is Venkatesh and today we will be solving the problem valid sudoku on lead code. So let's start with the problem description. Determine if a 9 cross 9 sudoku board is valid. Only the filled cells needs, need to be validated according to the following rules. Each row must contain the digits 1 to 9 without repetition. Each column must contain the digits 1 to 9 without repetition. And each 9 each, each of the 9 uh, 3 cross 3 sub boxes of the grid must contain the digits 1 to 9 without repetition. So the picture here uh, better describes the problem than um, I mean the actual description. Um, Sudoku is if, if you're not aware uh, it's a widely um, known puzzle. If the rules are pretty simple um, all the rows should have 1 to 9 digits without any repetition and all the columns should have 1 to 9 without repetition. And each 3 cross 3 grid here, um, usually all Sudokus are 9 cross 9. I um, think there are uh, different sizes, but yeah, the usual Sudoku is like 9 cross 9. Um, and, the, and, this, and the grid here, um, 3 cross 3 grid, should have numbers 1 to 9 without any repetition. So the input would be something like this. Uh, you will have some numbers and some empty spaces. Empty, empty spaces are uh designated as dot here or period so uh, we have to write a program which checks if a sudoku is valid or not so basically we have to check for repetitions in the, in the row in the column and the grid so if you think about it it's basically um you know let's make a workbook here so the initial intuition is to um traverse through the grid right and check for repetitions in the like on a row level column level grid level so when you say row level right you basically uh, you traverse through the whole grid and if you check you know i comma j uh, which is basically like um, i comma j in that condition would get you the row level stuff and the same in the same way if you do call for column you just have to reverse the ij values and you would be able to traverse all the columns so the tricky part here is to find out how do how do you traverse the grid like this three cross three grid so if you if you roughly make um, you know the grid here so dot 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 nine let's say All right. So essentially, you, we are looking at zero 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 one zero two and one zero one 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 two two zero two one two two, and in the same way zero three zero four zero five one three one four one five two three two four two five. So these these are the kind of grades we have to check for. So um, I mean, basically, we have to come up with a formula, right? Like when you are looping from when you are when you have two loops uh, where i is 0 to 9 i is 0 to 9 and j is also 0 to 9 how do you come with a formula come up with a formula which basically you know uh, replicates this kind of grid behavior so one simple way to simple way to do is basically i mean it's not initially intuitive but if you um, put this thing on a paper and try to come up with a formula you will see uh, you could have a row index let's call um, the grid row index can be um, represented by this formula 3 into i by 3 and column index can be represented by 3 into i modulo 3 and the actual values to check for um, would be row index plus the j by 3 and column index 
plus j modulo 3 so let's start with some values here right imagine i is 0 what would be the row index 3 into 0 by 3 is 0 and so initially i will be 0 let's say i j here 0 and 0 and what the row index and column index here would be like so row index would be 0 column index would be 0 too right because uh, 0 into i modulo 3 again uh, whereas i is 0 so row index um, let's say value column index value the row index value is basically this the final value which we check that is basically 0 plus 0 by 3 if a bracket is 0 again uh, 0 plus g modulo 3 is 0 modulo 3 um, so once i is 1 uh, j is 1 you would you would realize so row index is still 0 0 because um, 3 into i mod i by 3 or i modulo 3 where i is 0 but if when you come to row value um, if you see 0 plus 1 by 3 1 by 3 is still 0 0 row index value will be 0 column index value on the other hand um, 1 modulo 3 is basically 1 um, and column index would be j mod column index plus j modulo is 3 so it's 0 plus 1 1 when 2 0 and 2 i is still 0 j is 2 so row index column index are still 0 row index value here is um, again 0 and column index value is 2 right because column index value column index plus j modulo j is 2 2 modulo is 3 is 2 so if you, if you go on doing these calculations you would realize uh, that you are replicating uh, the following formula it will be 0 0 0 1 um, 0 2 and then 1 0 1 1 1 2 2 0 2 1 2 2 so this basically essentially represent the grid here and um, as you traverse through the whole array you will replicate all these grids so once now that we have a formula which we can use to find out um, the values in the grid we can just use a hash map or dictionary to remember if a value has been previously added or not so let's comment this out and start with the actual code so we have i'll be using go it's, it's a c like syntax you would would understand if you are aware of c or python so the i value is i mean the question clearly mentioned that the, um, the grid is always nine nine cross nine so you can even hard code instead of length length of board but it's always just to use the input and we need three dictionaries one to check the row level so let's do make of byte map byte boolean zero this basically initializes a map um, here byte represents both integers and um, and the period here um, so having byte just works we'll call it grid map um, or something else so I'm just copy paste it anyway so now we have um, three maps so let's we we have to um, basically reinitialize after every column um, checking through every column that's why these map initializations lie between the fur of i and fur of j is basically row and column so let's start with the row validation so the row validation is if board of i so the question mentioned the empty values will be dot here 
and when it is dot we don't have to do anything so let's check if it's not dot first if it's not dot and if row map of board of i j exists then return false if not just add the value to the the row map so that we can use it for duplicate validation if there is one so basically you're checking if there if it's a dot if it's not a dot basically it's a number uh, you check if the number already exists in the map if it is then return false if it's not then put it in the map so let me copy paste so you will do the same thing for column uh, validations uh, except you would switch j and i which replicates that you're looking which yeah which which resembles basically that you're looking at the columns rather than rows all right um, that's it it takes care of the column validations so let's now do grid validation you can just mention three cross three if you want all these comments really help when you go back checking your code after like two months or whatever so i usually have a small workbook and comments so our formula was 3 into i by 3 for row column index is 3 into i modulo 3 and now we can just do both of so row index plus j by 3 or column index plus j modulo 3 not equal to dot and you check the they exist in the map now so these are pain in maps to write you return false basically add them in the grid map you know what it's actually board of rather than straight values So most of our code, if you check, we are just doing short circuit um, exit, basically saying uh, return false, return false if any condition fails. Uh, but eventually, if none of these uh, false conditions are get triggered, then it's basically a valid pseudo So we return true at the end. Let's run. Yeah, declare or not here. So this is the thing with copy paste. All right. All right. So as you can see, the output is true. Expected value is true too. Um, this seems to be working. Let's submit the code. All right. It's been accepted. All 504 test cases have are, are passed for this code. For this question, let's go back. All right, there you go, folks. Valid Sudoku question uh, in Golan. I will add a link to the source code and the workbook um, on the YouTube description, video description. If you like the video, please subscribe and like the video. Thank you.